Hello everybody and welcome to a kind of different Houdini tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about an introduction to the Atmospheric Toolkit release. Um, this toolkit is still in beta, um, so there's a lot of tools that I need to finesse and make sure they work correctly. Uh, today we're going to talk about what's in the toolkit, how to navigate it, the instructions for it, everything like that, and what's going to come in the future. So if once you download the toolkit, it will look somewhat like this. The name might change to 0.1 or 0.2, depending on the version, but it will overall look like this. It comes with cloud reference, and the, these references come with iridescent, low clouds, mid clouds videos, and credits for videos and images where I've pulled them from on the internet. Most of them are like Wikipedia images, so they're fine uh, and they're public use, but uh, sometimes you do have to credit Wikipedia as well. So the, here is the experimental build. So in this folder, um, in this folder, you will find the builds that are experimental under development where I've sort of made an HD for them, but they may or may not work. Depending on your version of Houdini, I'm finding that um, a few things between 18.5 and 19.5 have kind of changed. Um, so I've had to experiment and go back and revisit some notes. So in here are the future builds. So things that are in progress that aren't fully there yet, but you can take a look and the general purpose HDAs that are you can use and are available to use. So I would recommend checking those out and using those first. In here is the information about the toolkit. So the things in the toolkit information of how to get it to work. Um, in here will also be a demo file once that's available. And that will show you on a more sincere level of how, like, how to you know, use a toolkit if you don't wanna watch a tutorial. So let's also talk about what you can expect in the next build of this. So I would love to create shelf tools. Uh, we have reference images available, example files are in progress, um, but we also have, so our cloud animation HDA, so it allows for animation of clouds. We have density adjustment HDA, so you can overall control the density of cloud better. We have the noise affection HDA, so it allows you to introduce more noise into the cloud. I'm also working on something called the cloud stack HDA, so it allows you to layer different clouds together in a group. Um, so it allows you to essentially build a cloudscape, but have those densities merge, overlap, maybe add together in a way that looks natural. So if you've ever seen a map painting of clouds, they look very cohesive and something that always bugs me in film and television is when you look at a cloudscape and you only see one type of cloud or um, three different types of clouds. Um, and it all looks very generic. So hopefully this cloud stack HDA will help us showcase a more fluid and dynamic cloudscape. That's the long-term plan for it. The high level clouds um, will allow you to generate like high level clouds that would exist in the upper atmosphere and the general shape of it. Um, it's kind of, at least at this stage, it's a little bit under development if they're going to be fully scientifically accurate. Um, but it's going to allow you to at least create a great base shape for your high level clouds. In the mid-level clouds, um, this once again will help you generate a base shape for your, or base cloud for your mid-level clouds that you can place around your scene. Same goes for the low-level clouds that we're working on. The ground fog, um, and in a lot of films you might see fog on the ground if you're panning through the clouds towards the ground. Um, sort of like if you've ever seen Chaos Walking, which I was a fan of, <laughs> of and I worked on, uh, there's this beautiful intro shot where this camera pans through this cloud um, and then goes down to the center of, the, well, really the surface of the planet, um, and there's ground fog. And this ground fog HDA will allow you to, once you do a pan like that, actually have fog that's high res on your ground. The contrail HDA basically will generate contrails that you can attach to plane and other aircraft. Um, it will have options for static or simmed. Um, I might make these two separate HDAs depending on if it gets too complicated. Cloud interaction HDA, which will allow for cloud interaction uh, between a cloud and an object. So if you have an aircraft passing through a cloudscape, this will allow you to create that interaction element. Well, then I have the atmospheric haze HDA and part of approaching this toolkit is that I really wanted to include atmospheric clouds that we barely ever see in case you want to simulate something that's in the upper atmosphere of a planet. So there's going to be something called the Atmospheric Haze HDA that will create that atmospheric haze around a planet. Admittedly, it might be a little bit more successful when applied to smaller objects, but we'll see how it goes. 
Planetary Projection HDA. Take black and hopefully take textures of clouds and project them across an object. Um, and it takes it will take a texture and generate clouds from it. That's the general idea right now. And it will basically create low res 3D clouds from a custom image. And that I would really gonna we're gonna see how that progresses. That's another crazy idea I have for this toolkit. Cloud proxy HDA. Sometimes you have to create cloud proxies uh, for layout or something. So this cloud proxy HDA will basically take your VDB and quickly make into a low poly, poly proxy. The Cloudscape Export HDA, often you have to merge your clouds together when you export them in a pipeline concept, uh, will basically take your clouds, merge them together, and make them one solid density that you can use. The Plain Mist HDA uh, will create mist coming off your plane and also hopefully have collisions on them. This is a work in progress. Um, when you're working with highly animated objects that have a huge amount of high velocity, it's very hard to you know form natural mist swirls on them because you have to factor in all that velocity and make it look realistic. So that one's very much under development. Thruster HDA, we're also going to be doing that. And the biggest challenge for this is not to copy CG Wiki because CG Wiki has a great example of a thruster that you can go download by yourself. Um, but making something like this that's even more flexible than that is a little bit of a challenge. So that's where this toolkit is at currently, and I hope you enjoyed all this information, and I'll see you in the next build. Bye.